Hey everybody, TL here with another book review for you. A couple days ago I reviewed Truth Witch. Today I'll be reviewing book two, Wind Witch. And so if you haven't read Truth Witch, you could still watch this review. I'm pretty spoiler free in all of my reviews. However, by the very nature of reviewing a book two, there might be some details that I'd be spoiling for book one. So if you haven't read Truth Witch, Maybe you should go watch that video, uh, but you can still watch this one if you're interested. I'll still have plenty of cool things to talk about. Uh, for instance, I want to talk about something that I forgot to mention in Truth Witch that I really wanted to mention for this one. Have you ever read the acknowledgments sections in the back of books? I love reading the acknowledgments sections, and uh, Wind Witch has, has got one right here, you know, the, the acknowledgments here. I love reading these, and... Um, it didn't mention it in the acknowledgments for Wind Witch. It mentioned them in Truth Witch, but again, I forgot to mention it with the review. Did you know that Susan Dennard and Sarah J. Moss are like best friends? And um, I noticed that, well, this one, the blurb on the front of the book here is for Alexandra Bracken. But uh, in the blurb for Truth Witch, Sarah J. Moss is on the front cover. And sometimes, sometimes, um, being an author myself, I know a little bit about this world, sometimes these blurbs... Um, they're just kind of made up. You might contact an author asking for a blurb, and uh, they'll just write you a quick phrase, even if they've never read the book, or their publicist will write the phrase. Sometimes they're, they're fake. Sometimes um, the, the person scanned through the book and determined it was a book that they could at least blurb, and so they'd write something. Um, but I, I believe in the front of Truth Witch that Sarah J. Moss truly did write that one, because... Uh, Susan Dennard says in the acknowledgments that Sarah J. Moss read every single one of the drafts and furiously wrote comments for her and really helped her out, um, and that they were uh, really kind of working together on that in, in a sort of sense, uh, that, that Sarah J. Moss was really very, very supportive of Susan Dennard. Why do I mention this? Well, there's something in Truth Witch, again, that I didn't mention in the last book review, because that would have been a bit spoiler. So if you're worried about spoilers, now might be the time to, to stop and to avoid. But I'm going to keep going because I want to talk about this. I'm really excited about this. So there is a thing in Truth Witch, or a, a, a group of people... Um, or a term, I guess you could say, a term called the, the Care Awin. I don't know if that's, I'm pronouncing that right. Again, I'm terrible with pronunciation, so sorry about that. But the Care Awin is a group, it's two people, uh, two people who have been lost for a long time, or rather that they're looking for, uh, kind of like a prophecy, and they're looking for these people because the Care Awin, they will bring balance back to the world, and they'll save the world, and, and all that sort of thing. And it's two people, um, one dark, one light, and they they um, kind of like a, a yin-yang, and they together are complete and whole. And uh, it, in book one, in Truth Witch, it's theorized at the end of the book that maybe Assault and Safi are the Karawin. And why I really find that fascinating from the acknowledgments specifically, Susan Dennard says that, that Sarah J. Moss is the rest of her. It's the, the together they are complete together, that they are the dynamic duo, that sort of thing. So I wonder, I almost wonder if Susan Dennard in writing these books sort of imagined herself as uh, Safi or as a salt and imagined Sarah J. Moss as the other. And that together, that pair, that's them. And so um, maybe Susan Dennard and Sarah J. Moss are the care I win. I don't know. But I've got some other theories on that that are come up, going to come up later in my review of Wind Witch. So uh, that may or may not be true. Again, I'm going to try not to spoil anything whenever I talk about the care I win a little bit later. That's um, not spoilerish. It's going to be speculation uh, because it's not exactly answered. But anyway, let's move on and start talking about Wind Witch. So the cover here is awesome. Again, uh, the cover for all these books are fantastic. I absolutely love them. This is a library book if you're wondering why it's shiny and it's, it's causing a reflection here. I do have Blood Witch coming in the mail in just, uh, well, tomorrow. Tomorrow's uh, the release day for Blood Witch, so excited to hopefully be getting that in the mail. I got my email that it's been shipped today from Amazon, so... Looking forward to that. But anyway, this here is Merrick on the cover. He's the Wind Witch, and he's facing away from us because in the opening moments of Wind Witch, and the prologue, as a matter of fact, uh, we find out that Merrick died. 
or rather that he didn't die, he barely escaped death, and he has become horribly disfigured through sea fire. Sea fire is a fire that can't be burned out at all, and so now he's not looking at us uh, because he's been disfigured. And um, he is, for the rest of the book, going to be trying to find out who it was that sent an assassin to kill him. Now, uh, before I start talking about more of the story, I want to back up a little bit. In Truth Witch, we saw one singular story, Safi and her escape away from everything that she was trying to escape from, and everybody who was trying to pursue her. Everything was about Safi. But in Win Witch, we have three separate, unique stories going on. Three different storylines that are all happening simultaneously with different goals and different purposes. And so there's a lot more going on in this book. In a way, the fact that there's a lot more going on, it made me a little less interested. Um, just because there was so much happening, I would change from one chapter to the next, and we would change POVs, and I would lose a little bit of that interest because I really wanted to keep reading the storyline that I was reading. This is a common tactic in books, so it didn't bother me a whole lot. It was just so much different from Truth Witch, which had a very singular purpose, um, that it sort of took me aback. So, Wind Witch, I wasn't quite as captivated with it, at least at the start. By the end, I read the last 50% of the book in a single night. I uh, stayed up until like 1.30 in the morning reading the book. Uh, don't you love whenever that happens uh, in a book? You could just stay up because you don't want to put it down. Um, and that happened to me in this book. So in, in some ways it was better than True Witch. In other ways, it wasn't quite as gripping. It wasn't quite as, um, it didn't grab me right away uh, because of the whole, the different way that things worked. But Anyhow, um, so there are three different three different storylines in this book. Um, there is Safi's storyline, and she is uh, she is with Vaness, uh, the Empress of Marstock, and they're going back to Marstock. Uh, and their ship very early on gets caught on fire as well, the same way Merrick's did. And now they're on foot, just the two of them. And uh, the Hellbards come and they find them because they've been looking for Safi this whole time. Uh, Hellbards to, to take her back to uh, Kartora uh, and Emperor Henrik because she is to be the Empress. Um, and so the Hellbards find them and the rest of the story is Safi with the Hellbards. I'm not going to say any more because I don't want to spoil anything. But I didn't really like this um, thread as much at the beginning. But uh, by the end, I really loved it. And I couldn't get more of it, so I'm looking forward to where it's going in Blood Witch. Now, let's talk about Merrick's line, because I already mentioned Merrick a bit. Um, Merrick, Merrick's POV was interesting. Merrick's POV I, I could follow. But there was another POV on the other side of the same storyline that I just wasn't as big getting into, and that's Vivia, uh, Merrick's sister, Vivia. Um, at the beginning, she was very mean, very kind of cruel, very kind of cold and rude, and I didn't particularly like her, and I just kind of wanted to skip past her POV. But by the end, I was warming up to her POV. I can't say that I ever truly loved her POV, but I was warming up to it um, by the end. And so uh, that, you know, it was sort of getting interesting. But I would say that Merrick and Vivia's storyline was my least favorite favorite of the storylines, um, but it also had the most intrigue in it, the most mystery, the most questions that arose out of it, so it kept me turning the pages even if it wasn't uh, completely as gripping as the first. And then there's my favorite storyline, which is Assault and Aduin. Aduin the Blood Witch, Assault the Thread Witch. Um, and the two of them, they start off separately because if you remember where we left off in Truth Witch, Assault was going to try to find Safi, and Aduin um, was he wanted to, to rescue, um, man, I forget her name now, but um, Merrick's aunt, Evrain, I think, Evrain. He wanted to rescue her, so he took her back to the origin well and left Assault, even though um, he wanted he had to stay with Safi. That was his goal, but, but, um, but he didn't. So they started off on two separate tracks, but it really didn't take long. I'd say, like, within the first six chapters, and they were back together again. Um, the one thing led to another. I'm not going to spoil the story for you, but um, Aduin was supposed to track down Isolt now. And he can't track down Isolt because he can't smell her blood. Um, but they stumbled upon each other anyway, and um, he decided that he wasn't going to to take her back um, to, to Corlant. If you remember Corlant from the previous book, he was that um, guy in Safi's home village that like wanted to capture her and shot her with the arrow. 
And, um, and so Corlant wants his salt, but uh, Aduin decides not to, to take her back. And they sort of form a tentative alliance there. Um, but Assault is still wondering why she can't smell, or why she can't see the threads, um, Aduin's threads, and Aduin's wondering why he can't smell Assault's blood. We don't get any answers to that um, throughout the story. But uh, their purpose, again, Assault's trying to find Safi, so Aduin's going to help her um, go find Safi until something happens that it becomes more important and takes more of a priority, and it derails them both to the point where Assault even abandons her search for Safi, trusting that Safi is going to be safe. She still wants to find Safi, but she realizes there's more at work. And um, in Assault's timeline, we see more from the puppeteer, Esme is her name. We see more from her, and we find out that Esme seems to be working for Aduin's father. So, uh, or at least we think that he is, we assume that he is. No clear answers, but it seems that way. So, this is all going to be very interesting. Very interesting what happens in Blood Witch. The storylines are coming together. I'm not going to say anything more about Aduin and Assault's timeline and exactly what they do, but it's an interesting perspective. I loved that storyline the best. Now, here's where my theorizing comes in. Halfway through the book, and this is a bit spoiler, so if you don't want to hear this spoiler, skip like 10 seconds ahead. Um, Aduin says that only half of the origin well has come back, that it wasn't fully awakened, and therefore only half of the Ker Elwin must have been found. Now, if the Ker Elwin, if only half of the Ker Elwin have been found, who is it? Salt believes that Safi must be the true half of the Care Ewen and that she is worthless and nothing, and, and so she gets all sad and depressed. But here's my theory. My theory is that Assault is the true half of the Care Ewen and Aduin the other half. I have no basis of proof on that, but why do I think that? Well, it says that the Care Ewen's a unique group, that they're void witches, first off, and um, Assault has been accused or has the ability to possibly be a void witch, and we have already accused Aduin of being a void witch. Secondly, um, the Care Ewen uh, are like this mythical pair, this um, strange pair, and we already know that both Aduin and Assault are strange. Remember, um, Assault has no blood scent, and Aduin has no threads. Between that, the two of them are very unique, and neither one of them are even thinking about them being the Kara Ewen. As a matter of fact, Aduin hates the idea of the Kara Ewen because he was a monk, and he sort of turned his back on the monk's um, beliefs. And Assault thinks that she's worthless. So the fact that the two of them are oblivious to the fact that they could be the Kara Ewen makes me think that they're the Kara Ewen. How about that? What do you think of that, huh? Uh, so that's my theory. Uh, what are your theories? Maybe you drop them in the, in the comments below. Let me know what you're thinking, um, and if you're excited for Blood Witch or not. Uh, I am, and I can't wait to, to read it, so um, that book review will probably be coming in about a week or so. As soon as I get the book, I will devour it, no doubt, and then I'll write my review. Uh, if there's anything else that you want to see from this channel, I mentioned that last time, please go ahead and put it in the comments. I'd be happy to try to provide it for you. Um, have a book you want me to review? Let me know in the comments. I'm happy to try to read that as well and leave a review for it. All right, signing off. Bye.